Hello, Facebook friends. Mwah! Long time no see. Ah, I hope you can hear the music in the background, leaning a little into my laptop. Ah, come in, pause, and breathe. If you've followed me at all, you know that that's part of what I'm sharing. It's not just about the information, it's about the transformation of when we connect. That's the way of the infinor. We can talk about whatever we're gonna talk about. Hi, who's ever joined us? Not sure how to do this. Let's see if I can figure that out. Well, anyway, <laughs> say hi in the comments if you get to connect with us live. For those who join us live, welcome. For those who enjoy the replay, hmm, holding space for you and each and every one of you. So, hello, welcome. Let's see. It says I don't have the best internet connection. So, I think I'm going to stop the music. I think that the... Ah, uh, there we go. I think that trying to listen to Spotify and talk with you all at the same time was stressing my poor little internet connection. So welcome. Pause, breathe, come in. I'm sharing time together in virtual hugs. So it's been a little bit since I've connected here on the public page. Um, I still connect in my Facebook groups with the Yinpreneur Wisdom Circle and the Village Sisterhood. But today I ended up in a Facebook conversation that um, I was chatty in the Facebook conversation, but I realized there's a little more that I want to say and it really got me thinking. <laughs> so I'm going to take a few breaths because I know it takes a moment for the word to get out there for the bot. So while we're waiting for possibly more people to join us, just take a breath. Come into the space. I mean, one of the reasons I haven't connected as much is because I've been busy as heck. Finally starting to get my place back in order. I've got my desk there. Uh, most of the boxes are unpacked. <laughs> the place is painted. The renovations are mostly done. Um, so I'm my head, peeking my head above water and getting ready for the next phase, which will be staging and selling and looking forward to the next life, moving into the two bedroom and doing some fun stuff in my new Manhattan neighborhood. But more on that later. So let's come in and breathe. Pause, use this time, as I say, to slow down, to speed up your success. So I'm just going to start because I don't want to stay on too long. If folks join us, wonderful. Um, not exactly sure if I can see if folks join us, but that's great too. If you listen by the recording. So here's what happened. Today, I ended up in a conversation with someone I really admire. I'm not using any names because this isn't the only person who feels this way, so the name won't matter. Um, but another friend that I really respect, um, done work with, shared a post. And I read the post and I was really moved. And really, it's just talking about a lot of the things you know I rant about, the whole non-feminine six figure rant you know it's always about making six figures and, and it's, it's very loud and it doesn't feel authentic and you wonder what the intention is and I believe that it makes people they're turned off they're turned off by the energy the pushing the almost yelling of the marketing and so I was like really intrigued to learn more it's like I'd love to hear more about this especially this is geared towards women women in business mostly, so I'm thinking women entrepreneurs. And I wanted to know more about it, so I signed up and we started chatting. And then the conversation got even more interesting because it got into some other topics. Um, I speak of the traditional masculine, and this is not, I'm not about masculine energy. The yin and yang is totally about the yin and the yang symbol, if you know it, it's got masculine and feminine energy. It's never an either or. The yin and yang symbol, actually the two lead and follow, as we say. Um, and there was a lot more said, but one of the topics was about balance, and I brought up the word balance. And the response was, I don't believe in balance. It's a myth. And it's a myth taught to us by masculine, binary, 
whatever culture. And I thought, okay, I think this is what a lot of people believe. And so they believe that balance doesn't exist. I personally believe it's because we do just that. We come from this traditional, limited, linear, binary approach to the balance. Being in your yin, being a yinpreneur, being in your yin wisdom, the yin being the feminine, the preneur being the more masculine, the yin, the being, the preneur, the yang, and the doing, there is balance and it's not linear and it's not binary. As a matter of fact, yin energy is sometimes called chaos. For me, balance is not, not being in the extremes because it's in the extremes of either being in those extreme energies, being attached to the extremes, as we, I often speak of when I'm studying the Buddhist practice, that's where the suffering comes in, that's where the chaos comes in, that's when the crazies come in, right? That you're out of balance because you're in one extreme or the other. Versus the balance that I think so many people get caught up in, and the visual often represents it, is a scale. And that balance means things should be equal. And I don't believe that's what it's about at all. But here's the irony of it. Even with the traditional visual of a scale, you can balance a scale that may be equal in weight, but when we look at items, depending on what items you're putting on a scale, their density, their weight, composition, you may have several of one item and one of another because they're not alike. So then the equity still doesn't exist. It's not five of these and five of these and you've got equity. I mean, you have one brick and you may never actually find, well, you will, but you're not gonna have balloons on the other side. You're not gonna have pillows. You're not gonna have marshmallows, right? Um, to balance a brick but it's about being in the extremes. For me, that's what being in balance is, coming out of the extremes. So if we speak back to the yin and yang energy, hi Renee, welcome sweetheart. So let's take the yin energy that I am, yin and yang that I often speak of, and just go ahead and let's use that as the example. If you're leaning into a yang energy, which is all about doing and being in your head, and busy, 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 doing, 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 perfect conversation for this time of year. The summer energy, hi, the summer energy is a high yang. And it's a full yang energy. It calls you to do and be social. It's about being in full blossom, and this is a good thing. The masculine energy is about doing and getting things done and getting out there and socializing. But now here's the thing. Get too far, lean too far into that energy, you're probably gonna face burnout because you're using up all your energy. So you then have to lean into the yin, lean into the rest, lean into the water element, which is the, not the fire element, <laughs> oh, okay, great, Renee, I guess you're singing, wonderful. Thanks for taking a break, enjoy the replay if you're not staying long. So if we stay with that yin energy, which is um, the being and the water element, for example, and then we've got this yang doing fire element, this isn't about taking the yin water element and throwing it onto the yang fire element and putting the fire out. This could be about allowing the fire to burn as if it's over to the side, but being with the yin abreast. One can actually, hi Ralph, wonderful to see you here, honey. Miss you guys. You can be with your yin restful energy while a fire is burning. It's not an either or. And I want to just put these out there and then you decide what to do with them. But this concept of it's always an either or, it's always about equity, it's about a scale and everything is in balance if it's equal, no. When I first played with this idea, I realized I used the metaphor of a bicycle. A bicycle is only in balance in movement. 
It's only in balance, of course, you put the kickstand up, right? But in terms of movement, if you're moving forward, you're more likely to be in balance. That's not an equity. It's not a scale. It's about the forward movement. So another way of looking at it, being in balance is not being stagnated. If you're on a bicycle and you're riding forward and you look backward, if you're not paying attention to still looking forward, sometimes if you change your pace or go too slow, you'll stop or possibly even fall over. But if you know where you're going and you're looking forward, you're still gonna be in balance. Again, it's not about equity, it's not about equal, it's not a scale. You can be in balance while moving. When I was studying meditation, we used to do the moving meditation and we would just walk foot, toe, foot, toe, and breathe and be. So for me, balance is about not being in the extremes. Finding that place that allows you to not lean into the extreme of doing and burnout, not lean into the extreme of so rested you're not getting anything done, but finding the balance so that you feel grounded, so that you feel renewed, so that you feel confident you can keep moving forward. So if anything, hi, Cuz Philip, if anything, it's more about the balance that allows you to be grounded and centered and continue moving forward. More like riding a bike, definitely not a scale. So write in the comments, what are your thoughts about life balance? Do you feel it's a myth? Do you feel it doesn't exist? Or do you just feel it's maybe hard to achieve? What are you feeling? Are you relating to anything I'm talking about? But I just wanted to share this. Think about it, play with it. What does life balance mean to you? How do you know when you're out of balance? How do you know when you're in balance? Is it something in your head? Is it something you tell yourself? Is it a feeling? How do you know? And then if you feel out of balance and you check in, what do you do at that moment? I believe it can be simple as a breath. Kind of recalibrate. It doesn't have to be either or. It doesn't have to be masculine, feminine. It doesn't have to be negative or positive. And I definitely am not going to think about being equal. If I'm feeling out of balance, I'm going to take a breath. I'm going to plant my feet. I'm going to get grounded. I'm going to come present. Thank you. And then I'm going to check it out. Okay, so now I'm feeling balanced and grounded. I can move forward again. Yet, if I'm in the extreme, if I'm busy, confused, working too hard, tired, it's a little harder to be balanced. It's harder to be balanced in my mind. It's harder to be creative. It's harder to be clear. It usually takes me more time to do things. So let's let go of the more traditional, as I say, masculine definition, old school, if that word works better for you, idea that life balance is about equity. In other words, I'm not spending enough time with family or I'm at work all day. How can I possibly have life balance? Are you fully present when you get home with yourself, with your higher power, with the people you live with? They will feel connected and engaged if you're fully present. When you're fully present, you're probably listening more. If you have a great life and you're making the money and bringing it home, they probably appreciate that. What they don't appreciate is not that you go to work and you spend all your time at work, it's that you seem like you're never present. You're always leaning into that doing rather than the being that they're calling you to. So when you come home, take a breath before you enter the door, maybe before you get out of the car, get off the bus or the train. <sighs> I'm transitioning, I'm gonna be present. You may have to say, give me a minute. I'm regrouping, I'll be back before you connect with the family. So rather than pushing them away and alienating and being totally out of balance, you take a moment, take a breath. So maybe it's a short time. You listen for a minute before you go and take your breath. That's what balance is about. It's not going to be, if you're working, the chances of you having the same number of hours at work and home 
are slim. It's not going to happen. You'll say life balance is a myth. If I'm breathing while I'm at work, if I'm pacing myself, it's a whole nother conversation. Got lots of blogs on that one. Pacing yourself while you're at work, slowing down to speed up your success, being fully present while you, fully present while you're there, and then fully present while you're home. If this is resonating at all, put that in the comments or give me a thumbs up. If it makes no sense, put that in the comments too. I want to have a conversation. What does this mean to you? Do you believe in it? Is it a myth? Is what I'm saying like, I sound like a crazy woman who's been puffing on something? Or are you starting to relate? So as I was saying, you come home and you're fully present. You're fully present with whatever you're doing. Fully present. I don't care if you're working, cleaning, creating, or taking time for yourself. But I can almost guarantee, unless, I mean, if you have a bad relationship, uh, that's a whole nother coach, right? But if the relationship is in a good place and you come home and you're fully present with your spouse, your partner, your children, your pets, be fully present. Let them know I'm here. I'm listening. I feel you. When you are connected and engaged, when you're leaning into being present, it's less likely they're gonna tell you, you're never here, you spend all your time. And then you too won't feel as though I have no life balance. If you come home, you're able to renew, you're able to take in all the wonderful energy of the people that you're surrounded with. You'll be able to enjoy them in the doing and the quiet because there's nothing to prove. There's no justification when you're in a good relationship. If you're feeling renewed energy, you won't feel as out of balance. You will feel connected. You will feel more of the balance. Let go of, it has to be the same number of hours. It has to be the same amount of time. It has to be equity. This isn't about equity. This is about full presence and energy leaning into what makes you and those around you feeling safe and grounded, connected, thank you, and able to move forward. Breathe with that. Give me a thumbs up or a heart if it's resonating. If you've got questions, put those below. I'd love to either answer them in the comments or maybe it's a whole nother Facebook Live. But I invite you, rather than just throwing it off that life balance or any form of balance is a myth, I challenge you to find ways to one, be aware of what it feels like when you're in balance, to be aware of what it feels like when you're out of balance. It actually helps more that when you're in balance to find those rituals and practices that help you bring back to balance. For me, sometimes it's a simple breath. That's also because I'm practicing longer term 10, 20 minute mindfulness and meditation. So I've got the practice going. So when I went take one breath, frankly, my mind and body remember it. But even if it's one breath, break up the negative energy, the draining energy. So be aware of how it feels when you're out of balance. Be aware of how it feels when you're in balance. Create these rituals and practices to bring you back into balance. Don't just give up on it. Don't say it doesn't exist and then live your whole life out of balance. This is an energy practice, not a time, not a justification, not an equity practice. This is a power practice, an energy practice. Lean into the yin that calls you to renew. Lean into the yang when you're feeling the energy to do. Thank you. And right now, just be with that practice. I know, I know I'm out of balance if my shoulders are up around my ears, everything about me is tense, my mind is a fog. Stop. Breathe. Remember, what was I doing? What was the intention? Oh, bright. Let go of multitasking. That's one way to be totally out of balance. One task at a time. And be with that. Oh, hi. My kitten is trying to play tag. Say, where are you, Sherlock? Say hi.
<laughs> anyway, take a breath. Come into the moment. Feel your shoulders go soft, your whole body. The oxygen will fill and power your brain. Release and the out breath. Let go of whatever you thought was in the way, but mostly that balance doesn't exist. It doesn't exist because you don't believe in it. It doesn't be exist because you don't practice. It is there. It's yours to create. And it's a gift I want you to have so you can be healthier, more rested, more renewed, more powerful, more in your creativity, your inner wisdom. Go forward without stress and burnout. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. I'm going to go put on some music for us to listen to on the way out. Um, let's see. Okay, or maybe I'm not. <laughs> My computer may have gone to sleep. Let's see if it will allow me to reconnect with my Spotify. Okay, it's not, and I'm not gonna waste your time. Let's just breathe together, holding space for you, sending love. Slow down to speed up your success. Remember to breathe. Create the balance in your life. Share in the comments if you've got suggestions for what's your favorite ritual and practice. To either notice when you're out of balance or to come back into balance. Hope you're having a great Friday. Namaste.